Now I'm kind of limited on tools, but I think I can get it all done with just this sheetrock knife, standard screwdriver, and a Phillips screwdriver. Okay, I got a little pair of pliers here too. I don't think I'm going to need that. The only reason why I've got got my uh, sheetrock knife here, I call it, is I want to score around here because with them painting this, some of the paint has gotten down in there. So if you don't lightly score this first, chances are when you take this cover plate off and you want to try to pry it off, you're going to have a fun surprise on your hands when this cover rips off the paint or the sheetrock paper or whatever. Okay, so the box for some reason is pooched out at the bottom, so I know that's not touching. I'm just going to have to kind of lift it from here and be careful with it and see what I can do. I'm sitting on the cabinet here. <laughs> so I can try to do this so you can see what's going on. Okay, so the first thing to do is to take these screws out, obviously, and I've got the breaker turned off outside because once I remove this light switch, that those two wires in there are going to be hot. And I don't want them to bite you. It's never recommended to work on a hot light switch junction box or an outlet junction box or anything else for that matter that has to do with power. I always try to identify what circuit it's on, what breaker it's on in the sub panel and shut it off. Okay. I got to be careful with this. And I see maybe right in there. I've got to do something. And incidentally, I'm also going to have to be careful. Uh, yeah, see there, I knew that might happen. This switch here is for a heater, and I thought that might be on its separate circuit. And see there, that is on a separate circuit. So this light is on one circuit, the fan is on another circuit, and this is on there too. I pull that and nothing happens. And so is it possible sometimes when you get ready to work on a junction box, a ceiling, or a light switch junction box, and find out that you have actually two circuits in a box like that? Is that possible? The answer is yes. So I'm just getting you set up here again. And we're going to take the cover plate off here. So I got to be aware of that, that the power is still on there. And maybe what I should do uh, is go back out, identify. I think I might. See, I'm getting this off, but I've got to see right there it was hitting because there was a glob of paint right there. And the rest of it looks loose. And it looks like it's hitting right in there. I think I'm going to go back outside and identify. Wow, what the heck? There's paint is still hang, hanging up right in there. I can feel it somewhere. Okay. So I'm going to take this out. But like I said, there's two different circuits in there, and I don't want to. I don't want to get back in there and, and somehow accidentally hit the side. Because if I hit the side of this uh, switch, maybe I I touch a screw, and the box here is a metal box, not a plastic box. And the last thing I want to do is sh shock myself. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have I'm gonna leave that on, and I'm gonna turn the breaker off and find out which one that is and get it shut off. Work safe, not sorry. Okay, I want you to see no monkey business. See that fan is off and there was a round ring up there that turned red too. That was kind of slick. And that was just on a, an electrical outlet or, or a breaker in the sub panel. It just said lights and plugs. And it didn't earmark that it was the heater in the bathroom so sometimes you know they can't mark everything in the panel 
Okay, so sometimes you're going to have to start flipping breakers, read the little areas where it says lights and plugs and this, that, and the other thing, and, and eventually, eventually you'll get it. Okay, so that means now I have two different circuits in here, and both of them are turned off, and I can remove this switch. That's our next step.